hello and good day if that's what you're into. My name is Teresa Valentino and today I would like to just take a quick moment here to share with you one of the symptoms of PTSD that I live with. It's one of the really common symptoms that a lot of people have, not only from PTSD, but from depression. And I think even people who don't necessarily um, meet mental health thresholds for diagnosis probably experience this a lot, but people probably aren't just really familiar with the word anhedonia, which is spelled A-N-H-E-D-O-N-I-A, -E if you'd like to look it up. Um, but anhedonia is that situation where you just can't motivate, where you're just not feeling it. It's kind of like whole life impotence, where you just can't get it off the couch, you just can't get it up for anything, even things that you enjoy doing, even things that you like to do. Um, anhedonia is that part of depression where just nothing really feels worthwhile. Where, um, I, for me, I have a lot of days like that. So I made another video about uh, a situation called subjective distress. And I gotta tell you, I have finally feel like after all these years of therapy and working in depression and everything else, I have finally turned a corner on having anhedonia without subjective distress. You know what I mean? Because it's one of those things where when you've worked on something literally for decades, every single day for decades, and it's still a problem, that can be super demoralizing. And that's where that little sneaky ass subjective distress comes in again to try to make you feel like you're not succeeding when you totally are. So subjective distress is probably the worst enemy in your recovery, in your resilience. One of the worst, one of the top worst ones. Self-judging and self-disapproval is probably the number one. Um, so the deal with anhedonia is like, I've learned not to fight against it. I've learned to just reframe it in my brain. When I'm having anhedonia, which is a lot of the time, I even had it again this morning, um, I feel very tearful. I don't feel like doing anything. I can't focus. I don't have any energy. I would love to go to the beach again, but I'm not feeling it. And it's just, I don't know, I'm not feeling it. So I'm not doing it. And I'm not going to stress about that because the part of me that wants to go to the beach is the part of my brain that doesn't want to deal with what's happening inside me right now, which is that I feel like shit. Kind of. I'm not really anymore because I let it pass. That's the thing. Excuse me. So, um, anhedonia, when you are having that, you might think of 25 things that you would like to do or that you should do, that big should list. You'll start shooting all over yourself. Oh, well, I, you know, how can I just be laying here feeling like crap staring at the ceiling when I should clean the kitchen and return that library book and blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? That's all a nightmare. You have to just let that go. The best thing I can tell you about anhedonia is to just reframe it as downtime for your injured brain, okay? If you had been, again, with the hit by a truck analogy, instead of being raped, if you had been hit by a truck, okay, you would expect to have difficulties with this for the rest of your life, adjusting and dealing with it, maybe, depending on how severely you got injured. So with your mind, it's a lot more fragile than with your bones. You really have to work to get it back. They don't have anything like a cast or no, you know, there, there isn't anything you can really do about it in the same way that you can rehabilitate a physical injury. You just have to keep working at it. And every experience that follows that damaging experience has to somehow fit in and integrate with the injury. So think about it that way. Think about all the shit that you've been able to do and accomplish, keeping your home and your body and your clothing clean, keeping yourself fed, keeping, you know, everything from going completely off the rails, keeping your lights turned on and everything else. Um, you did all of that while significantly injured, right? A big part of the abuse that I experienced was people acting like it was nothing. Nothing had happened. I had nothing to complain about. My mom's number one classic line, you know, if I got to choose what was going to go on her tombstone, there she probably won't get a tombstone because my brother and sister don't even care enough to do anything, I'm sure. But um, if I was going to choose what to put on her tombstone, I would put stop crying or I'll tell you, stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about because that was her number one quote for me, baby. So um, it's good that I don't get to choose. But anyway, um, so when that's the kind of attitude that the world has always given you, which is like, Nine out of 10 sexual assault survivors, that's what it is. Um, it can be difficult. It can be really difficult to uh, understand how injured you really were. Um, and then the fact that you have to keep interacting with a world that wants to see Louis C.K. again as soon as possible. You know what I mean? The, we're in it, man. You just got to deal with it. You just got to keep, if you need days of downtime, just don't fight them because 
like this was my success and what made me want to make this video today and explain it today of all days is that I was totally successful with it. I had a ton of shit I wanted to do. I had little adorable neighbor children run up to my door. They, they come up to my door and they put their little faces under my curtain. They go, hi, hi, hi. And that makes my day. But even today she did it twice and I couldn't even, I couldn't even like do anything but say, hi baby, hi sweetheart from my bed because I just wasn't feeling it. I had to cry about some stuff. So... And then it passed, you know what I mean? And as soon as I started feeling back to my old self again, like I started feeling like, oh, you know what? I'm actually kind of hungry. And I already was hungry because I hadn't eaten yet today. It's already like one o'clock in the afternoon, two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, you know what I mean? I didn't even know it was two o'clock in the afternoon. I thought it was like 11 because it's like that with anhedonia. You lose time sometimes. So this is what I'm saying. Look how quickly you can let it pass. Look how quickly you can just let it not be a thing. The same way as if like my back is too sore, my legs are too injured or something, then I just can't walk somewhere today. You know what I mean? And I have to do it the exact same way with anhedonia. You have to start honoring your emotional state and your um, and your overall psychological well-being just as you would your physical survival. You know what I mean? If you have pneumonia, you don't force yourself to still go to the gym anyway. So when you are having your anhedonia moments or days or hours or whatever it is, just roll with it. Just accept that you need the downtime. Take it as a sick day. Lie in bed until you feel better and then get up and at them again, baby. So I hope that's helpful for you and I'll see you soon. Check me out at TeresaValentino.com. Please subscribe, rate, like, comment, all that stuff. I would love to hear your thoughts on this because I know I'm not the only one who has it. I know I'm not the only person dealing with this. Thanks.